Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dynasty Pulse. I am Biggs. He is Grindberg. We are here with you. Uh, <clears throat> we're doing a Scott Fishbowl mock draft. If you remember two episodes ago, Scott mm. Fish joined the program, and that was pretty cool. Um, button pushing, button pushing. Need to get a produce. Oh, yeah, that's right. We have one. Um, so here's what we're doing. We're about to like get this mock draft kicked off. Um, and we're mocking Scott Fishbowl 14. Uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy in the in the Twitter space about Scott Fishbowl mock drafts and how well, every time I do a mock draft and then I go to the live event, it's different. And yeah, but what we're doing here is not picking our perfect team. We are picking or, or creating the tiers. So that's T-I-E-R-S, not T-E-A-R-S, like Canadians cry. It's um, <clears throat> we are creating tiers with which we can pivot uh, on and off players if they're, oh, they've fallen uh, and I'm going to draft them. Um, and to discuss all that, we first of all, we have Schultze, but also we have a fantastic special guest today. Um, he is from Yards Per. Well, I'll, I'll let you introduce him. Uh, Schultze, let's, let's get Alex in here. Welcome. Uh, yes, I'm super happy that we get to have Alex on here. Um, he is the the big boss man over at Yards for Fantasy. And without Yards for Fantasy, I'm not doing anything in the fantasy space. Um, he let me and my dumbass best friend, Dennis. Shout out to Dennis. And he's in our market. What a tonight. dumbass. Yeah, he is a big <laughs> dumbass. I love him. Um, Alex let two dumbasses do a podcast on his his platform and hell yeah he's the man he i've learned a ton from him he needs he knows his stuff and i'm super super glad he's here welcome alex why don't you Hello. tell everybody on top of you know what what uh what our producer schulte just said like tell us a little about yourself like what you do and uh your platform because i i know it has a a big stage and uh we want to hear more about it yeah well i appreciate you guys having me on i love uh love scott fishbowl season uh, I kind of feel like it's the unofficial kickoff of the fantasy football drafting season. I can't believe it's time already. Um, but yeah, you can find my stuff at, you can find me on Twitter at A underscore Johnson FF. All my content resides at yardsforfantasy.com. Um, articles on the website, videos, podcasts on the Yards for Fantasy YouTube channel and the podcast feed. I mean, it's not just me. We've got an awesome crew over there. Um, I'm excited for you know, a great summer of drafting. Great season of fantasy football it's right around the corner um, let me ask you this if you are the boss of uh yards per can you get dave on the show absolutely tell tell dave order him i am your boss you will go on the dynasty pulse with those guys <laughs> we'll get whoever you want uh, awesome. That's awesome we should have a yards per full show absolutely everybody hey we did yeah, the time perfect time to pump the personalized pods there real quick yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, let's get this. Uh, let's get this sleeper draft started here. Schultz. Let's bring up the board and uh, let's get going. Let's tell everybody where we're positioned. I think you're the number one overall pick. So uh, I'm just going to go into the chat and let everybody know that we're going to get started right now. And then uh, Schultz, without further ado, let's go. All right. I think uh, Biggs is going to have to start it. Okay. Am I? I didn't. I'm not the one that originated it. Okay. I will start the draft now. Turn off the. Right. It was. It was Greenberg. Uh -huh. Turn off the chime. It's off. All right, Schultz, you're on the board right now, and uh, you're going with the 101 strategy. That's that. Is that your position in the Scott Fishbowl this year? It is. Yes. Um, I I wanted to take the one here to to replicate my my draft position and i'm gonna be taking josh allen i think it's a no-brainer especially with the scoring uh the qb rushing stuff um yeah no questions here on my end all right so alex where are you positioned it was that you did this went yes it was yeah, right so the 103 yeah yeah i got the one so you, one. Go so 
Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question about Lamar Jackson because that's a pretty bold uh, uh, pick, you know, based off of ADP and stuff like that. Obviously, he's rushing upside and based off the scoring right now, I think that, you know, he he's... I think he finished as the overall three quarterback last year in the fishbowl scoring within this format. So I don't see that being a bad pick. Uh, what are your thoughts on Lamar Jackson and why did you go there? Yeah. I mean, Lamar, he gives you those, you know, the rushing upside, the, you know, I mean, he's, he gives you that floor. Why is the everything rushing. timing out? Is that just my, <laughs> cause sleeper sucks. <laughs> Probably. Or Probably, yeah. yeah, it, it does time it out sometimes. Time's up. Okay. Pause it. <laughs> Pause this right. stupid thing. Jane, get me off of it. Okay. Um, I can't pause this. How do I do it? Sorry, everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go, man. Well, let's talk about Lamar difficulties. Jackson while I do this. Yeah let, yeah, let Alex keep going on Lamar. Yeah, I mean, it's, he's there every year with his rushing. Um, I just... In a super flex draft, especially like this, I just like to start with a guy that I can rely on and, you know, gives me that high floor with plus the high ceiling um, that you need to win, you know, in a tournament like this. And then I can take my swings on guys later in the draft. I want that safe choice uh, with the 103. And I, I, it really comes down to either Hertz. I'd be pretty happy with Hertz as well. It's kind of like a coin flip. Um, but yeah, I went with Lamar. I I took Lamar last year uh, with my first pick at the six, and he's I mean you know winning the MVP that'll boost up your ADP a little bit. Um, yeah, and, and indicators are he's going to have an even bigger year this year. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like I think did Scott pull back on the passing scoring a little bit in this this year? He did with the it's a, a one point for every fifty yards, not. 25 yards right so i feel like uh these rushing quarterbacks a little bit more important to get these rushing quarterbacks uh, at least for my strategy which is why i took anthony richardson at the seven yeah i after i picked the 103 i was kind of wishing i'd taken more like a mid to late first round pick so i could take an anthony richardson or even even like a kyler murray just a little cheaper than where i got lamar with that same yeah. you know same skill set same upside when I originally chose my division, I chose the 12 and then <laughs> my division got contracted and I was uh, automatically put in the seven. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm adjusting accordingly, just like I will do at the draft. Wait, what's your new position, Biggs? The seven. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize if you if that was your like actual one. I, I must have missed that. Yeah, but I'm kind of familiar with the middle because I was at the six last year, and I just I keep wanting that that back end, especially <clears throat> like doubling up and then getting the third round reversal. I love those those last three spots. Fire content, boys! Let's keep it going. <laughs> keep it moving. <laughs> uh, oh, Mace with the C.J. Stroud and Brock Purdy. Uh, yeah. stack at the turn that's not too not too shabby uh mm. cj stroud looking like a draft faller to the 12 now look at this we got a run here got a lot of running backs going off the board because of the the the, the scoring upside here i i just think that's going to be the one of the one of the focuses here in the especially in the first couple rounds here uh but uh Barkley going there. I, I, well, what do you guys thoughts on Barkley this year? Do you think he's going to have that elite, you know, top five upside? I'm going to ask Alex that question. Yeah, I think the upside is there. Um, I don't know if he's going to quite reach that. Um, you know, he's going to lose some touchdowns. You know, Jalen Hurts in the red zone. How much uh, receiving upside does he have? You know, Jalen Hurts is going to take off and run with it instead of checking it down. We'll see. Um, but he's still, you know, elite skill set, great offense, good offensive line. They're going to score a lot of points, and there's going to be a lot of fantasy scoring opportunities for him. So I'd say he probably safely, you know, in the top seven is where I would put yeah. him. Okay. Now, now we see our first stack here of uh, elite tierness. We got uh, the Mahomes-Kelsey stack. Uh, 
last year in the fishbowl that would have been unheard of but this year it's coming in here like uh with with the with the scoring in the scott fishbowl with the tight ends we looked at last year's i, I saw an article uh, yesterday from ryan heath from fantasy points and uh it, he he just outlined kind of how these guys lined up last year, and the highest score was Travis Kelsey at twenty two point one fantasy points per game, and that's pretty much quite a bit under the average. So with these tight ends, they're 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 going pretty early. So what are your guys' uh, strategy, Biggs? You went for a tight end early here. What 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 was your strategy behind that? And now there's a run. So right now I am essential. Did you take okay? Um, right, basically. Oh, you're gonna do it, aren't you? Damn it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just taking ADP fallers at the moment. And, uh, so in this mock, I am testing the strategy of taking guys after they fall out of their, their ADP based on the going for two Scott fishbowl mocks ADPs. Um, so Laporta has been ADP 12. I had an opportunity to take him at the, what is, what is that? The, the 18th pick 17th or 18th pick. And I thought that was pretty good value, especially with the tight end premium. Um, give him a hundred plus targets. And, uh, and I think he's going to do well in the fishbowl plus the, the tight end first down thing. Um, but I, I did want to like backtrack a little bit and, and ask Alex talking about Saquon um, you do you not have any reservations about the injury history plus the fact that he's 27 years old um, plus the fact that he's playing with Jalen Hurts? Uh, you don't see that as kind of like a bunch of red flags all bunched together. Um, not necessarily. No, I mean, the injury history, I mean, he would certainly an issue. Um, but in a tournament like this in particular, um, I'm going to take the risk. I want to take the swing. Uh, okay a guy like Barkley we just bet on the talent and I hope it sticks there you go Schultz you 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 got your guy there at the end of the 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 turn there on the second round uh you got your your Evan Ingram and uh you're pretty high on him um you know like he's the what fifth tight end off the board here uh tight end who finished last year Give us your outtake on on Evan Ingram. Obviously, you're high on him. You're taking him there. Um, do you think that's a Do you think that's a reach? No, I mean he's been coming off around tight end seven as pretty average. I just think when you look at the number of targets he's still going to get, um, and with the tight end premium on receptions and first downs, uh, yeah, Ingram is going to eat in that department. We, I mean, I've talked. A bazillion times over about the speed on the outside with Brian Thomas and uh, uh, Gabe Davis are only going to open up things for Kirk and Ingram and Kirk Brown. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Ingram would have been the 10th overall player in this scoring last year. And I just took him as the 24th player. So I think that's some ADP value, not saying he's going to be 10th again, but I still feel good about him being a top 24 overall player in this scoring. Good stuff. Okay, Biggs, I got a question for you now. Um, coming sure. in here, um, you got Anthony Richardson, good position there. I love his outlook. You know that already. Uh, you got Laporta and then Dak Prescott. What a good value there in the third round. I was caught in a play to taking him over Kincaid, but I saw the run of tight ends go. Uh, tell me a little bit more about you know your stack here. Well, no, your your quarterbacks here because uh, that that's unlike you. From from what I gather off of you, uh, from most of your strategy. Uh, so is it just because Dak was such a great value? Correct. Uh, that I mean, like I said, I'm I'm looking at guys falling off of their ADP according to the the going for two dot coms SFB fourteen mock draft ADPs, and um, I I am a huge Dak Prescott lover. He's he's probably my favorite value quarterback in all of fantasy football at this point for 2024. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he was right there. He was an ADP value. So, uh, you know, you got to shoot your shot. All right. I love that pick there. You got the double upside here there, uh, Alex, with the Lamar Jackson and Jaden Daniels uh, situation that, you know, with the Justin Jefferson, I do like your start here. Uh, tell me a little bit about Jaden Daniels and what you think his upside is in 2024. Do you think he could crack the top 10? Do you think that that is in his uh, realm of uh, opportunity? Do you remember RG3's rookie season? Uh, yeah, that and people are yeah people are, are really comparing that as the potential there. 
that's the upside. I don't know if that's where he's going to get, but that's that's a ceiling play. And I think he can. I think he can get there. He's got weapons. Um, and, you know, as he kind of, you know, learns the NFL game, he adapts to the NFL game, he's going to rely on his legs quite a bit, um, which, you know, as fantasy gamers, that's like, that's money for us. Um, yeah. Huge, huge upside. Definitely. I think his his floor is like a high end QB two. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like top five. Absolutely. I, I'm I'm right on there with you. Now tell us about your next pick here because now you're on the clock and you got a wide receiver, two quarterbacks, pretty solid start there with uh, Jefferson Lamar and Jaden Daniels. What's going through your mind right now? What are you thinking about doing? Um, I am looking at going to another wide receiver, I think. That's what we're going to do here. Um, don't take mine. Don't take mine. No, no, don't, don't take yours. Who's your take guy? Take him. Do it. Come on. I'm do, do it. it. You won't do it. Uh, let's go. Uh, I'm going back and forth with a few guys here. I'm going to go Drake London. Okay, so Drake London and 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 Biggs's guy slid Ooh. through the cracks here, and I don't think he's gonna divulge up until his pick right now because I think the people that are listening right now, the the five that are live, are probably within this draft, um, and uh, I don't think Biggs wants to divulge who his wide receiver is gonna be, but uh, it's glowing right now. Uh, let's, see. Should, let's just say <laughs> it starts with a B and ends in Randon. I you no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, I okay. think we might have the uh, fourth round Rashid Shahid pick coming in. Oh, no, I, no, no, I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. I think I think if you listen to our fantasy forecast uh, wide receiver hot takes there, Schultz, it's clear as day who Biggs is circling clear right as now. Day. Dude, that, yeah. but that re- that that episode's not even out yet. You can't yeah. just you can't just do that to the people. We're predicting and- the future. We're predicting the forecast. Actually, and that's <laughs> <laughs> he was there. He lasted. He fell all and the way, all the way to you. All right, I'm I'm really excited about my turn here because I don't have anything for quarterback, and I'm in rough shape. Uh, I'm gonna give shout out here to my boy Dennis because he's a he took that Murray Dennis and Harrison so stack, and he's he is really stupid. The stupidest is stupid, <laughs> but. I love the I love the swing at the Arizona stack. Ooh, and he's coming up again. There is some really nice uh, running backs along the board here. Ooh, we got a triple running back team here. Yeah, that uh, hasn't started. That's Brocal. Mm-hmm. All right, I, I see you. I see. You. I think I, I think I'm gonna get sniped here. Let's. What do you th- What are you thinking, Grindberg? Well, um, I'm hoping that I can get, uh, you know, the the last real elite quarterback. I think, in my opinion, uh, in within right now, uh, and, and I'm not talking about Caleb Williams. Uh, You're talking, I'm talking about. about- Jared Goff, hashtag Novato boys. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about Jared Goff, and I, I think Caleb Williams has got potential, but I, uh, I'm really hoping that uh, Brocal uh, lets him slide to me. Uh, but I'm not convinced it's going to happen with three running backs uh, on his squad. Uh, I, I'm assuming he's going to pick Jared Goff, Ooh, and there it is. Good. Okay, so uh, the prediction best football player ever born in Novato. So now Las for Vegas, me, Nevada, my favorite. No, Novato, <laughs> not Nevada. All right, so now it needs to switch switch tones. Oh, are you going another tight end? S- maybe sepia? Sepia How time tone? do I have? Oh, I'm going to have to... Hurry up! I went with did Caleb you Williams. Spicy. You went with Leb? I did. All right. You know, I got to take a shot. You know, he he has a he's he's surrounded by talent and he's got the opportunity to to thrive yeah, as a rookie. And then I'm going to I'm going to follow it up with a guy that I think is going to be uh, 
another really, really uh, strong showing in 2024. Uh, you know, a healthy Cooper Cup coming back. You know, they bring in Blake Corum to really solidify that run game as a backup and, and you know, a really good backup to Kyron Williams, who I think is going to get the steam there. But I think he's going to really, you know, have that offensive input where they're not going to skip a beat uh, regardless who's on the field in 2024 and Matthew Stafford, as long as he can stay healthy, I think that is positioned him well to, to really thrive. He has that potential to be a top 12 quarterback again. And uh, you know, I'm going to do that with, with Caleb Williams. I'm going to, I'm going to go with some, some upside and I'm going to go with some stability at the quarterback position there. I like that play from the 11 spot too, because after Murray, I don't think I would take a quarterback in the first round. Um, mm-hmm. So I think from the 11 spot and then at the turn, yeah, I'm doubling up at position talent. <clears throat> I, you know you, what? I, I think you were I able think, to still knock out quarterback pretty well. Yeah. I think my, I probably would have reconsidered now that I saw where tight end was, I probably would have reconsidered taking Kincaid there and taking uh, Dak Prescott instead. Um, because I think that just makes it a bit stronger if I could still get Stafford later, um, I, you know, with the, the the tight ends that are still on the board right now, um, you know, there's still Brock Bowers there. There's still David Njoku, you know, t- uh, uh, did Ferguson go? Yeah, he went already. So um, that's another tight end I really have my eye on this year uh, is Jake Ferguson, who just went. And, and, and that would have been a play I would have been easily on board with there. Uh, instead of Williams or whatever. So uh, it, I, th- I think in retrospect, my Kincaid pick might have been uh, just a little bit of a reach, but uh, I-, I like where my quarterbacks are at now uh, at this stage. Who's, who's, whose team right now at this stage of the game do you see as the biggest contender? Mine. I'm the draft winner, the mock winner, <laughs> of course. There it is. I do want to just point out real quick, I'm not a huge uh, Brandon Ayuk stan, but... Um, uh, he is his ADP is uh he's sitting right at where to go uh, <clears throat> ADP forty four and I got him in the fifties so I like that drop oh, oh totally he was, he was the best best uh value there you think he's a forty nine er for the season it says I I saw today that they are uh, working on the, they're in. Like they're working on the contract right now, so uh, I, I I think so. Do would I prefer him in Washington? Abs- absolutely, but um, anyway. but it, it looks like they're going to get something done, and uh, you know, I mean, he's like he's talented, so you know, you gotta. I'm I'm just I'm I'm just going with value right now. You think he's better off in Washington? I like the the pairing of him and Jaden, just like just knowing each other. Um, also, the stuff that he can do. Terry McLaurin is a traditional wide receiver. I think Brandon now you can do a little bit more than he can. So if he's going to come come in and take over, I, I think he could do it in Washington. Mm-hmm. Plus, he knows Adam Peters really really well. So, and Peters knows that's, him that's very right, well. That's true. That's true. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, Schultz. I mean, Triple, triple yeah. wide receivers here. Um, oh, yeah. You let Drake London, Chris Olave slide. Uh, you know, like you, you had the option to pick them a, a above Devontae Adams. So just I want to get your take on that one real quick. Uh, targets. Hmm. There you okay. go. Name of the game. The dude is going to get a bazillion targets, and all he does is catches about 80% of them every freaking year. So what what's going to change okay i got a question for you now um you, you're, you're going wide receiver heavy in in a format that is going to be really uh you know giving medals to running backs and 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 they're going to be the ones that are going to be achieving really highly and you do you don't even have a running back right now so what's what's your strategy now coming out of this because uh you know the running backs are starting to fall we got uh, a really good value in rashad white i saw here uh, and, 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 and Devani Chan, I'm surprised these guys have fell that much, uh, considering the scoring in, in, in this format. Uh, so what's your, what's, what's your strategy now when you're seeing this, uh, this coming down? So 
I will say my strategy for this mock, this is my first mock I've done since claiming a one spot. And yep. my my dream start is Alan Ingram Trevor, like I did, with my fourth mm-hmm. pick being um best best available position um at that spot. And I, I was kind of deciding between maybe Henry and Adams. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of playing around this one to see what hunting running back looks like. Um and we'll see. Yeah, I mean, Biggs is in the same boat right now. Uh, he doesn't have a running back either. And uh, what's your side on that, Biggs? Uh, is this just a kind of a trial thing for you to see how how your team can land if you, if you punt the running back position to kind of go against the grain? Because you know a lot of guys are going to be probably targeting running back early. No, it's in, in this mock, running backs are being taken uh, ahead of their ADP. So, so they're not they're not falling um so that's that's a situation that if if i get into it at the at the live draft in san francisco july 13th uh go to scottfishbowl.com and register for 2015 now um then it's just something that i'm i'm practicing for uh, practice makes perfect practice mm-hmm. practice makes permanent exactly i like so it I'm, I'm ready for any any uh anything to happen. Right. All right. So now we're getting into the, the latter half of here of this first of this sixth round. And uh, it's coming up to me. I, I, I'm seeing the value here too. Uh, you know, all these running backs, like big said are, you know, getting clopped up before their ADP. So you see a lot of these wide receivers that are now falling into the hands and, uh, I really like a couple double taps here at the wide receiver position. Uh, And there's, you know, I'm good with probably any four of the ones on the queue at this turn. Amari Cooper just went. Um, I'm really high on Malik Neighbors. Um, I think he's going to be able to garner a lot of targets. I think that, ah, there's George Pickens. He was the next one. I probably should have went him before but i still like uh zay flowers so i'm gonna pick right now i have zay flowers george pickens uh all both in the same same tier yeah i was hoping hoping one of them would fall but they did not yeah i I do as well i was hoping for zay to follow me as well just to stack them with lamar yeah that's uh that I, I really like that that clump of receivers and and I'm okay waiting uh into this round here to kind of double up there uh and now I'm gonna really have to co- start concentrating I think a lot of us uh you know start gobbling up some running back but uh we'll have to see uh, it's gonna be interesting all right you guys I'm gonna go away from type right now for the sake of content <clears throat> Um, because this guy is not a value at this spot. I'm I'm going to reach. Um, he is so right now. I think my pick is 78, and he is going in the mock drafts. Let me see if I can find it. At 97. So oh, I'm going JJ. almost two full rounds ahead, just so I can talk about him. Oh. All right, I I went with Romo Dunze. So uh, Rashid Shahid is the big steamer um, at, to use Grimberg's term, which is a terrible, terrible term. Grimberg steamer <laughs> is not good. Um, and uh, then <laughs> Romo Dunze. <laughs> okay, so with the Scott Fish Bowl scoring this year, <clears throat> Scott Fish has decided to put a premium on return yards for those players that. Uh, that do both get out on the field in, in the offensive scheme and also return. So, you know, Braxton Berrios carries some value just because he can get some return points if he's the returner in Miami, but the guys that are going to do both like Rashid Shahid, he will be out there as a deep threat on the field when the saints are trying to move the ball. He's also probably going to be returning kicks and he gets the biggest boost. He could have finished if we had Scott fish scoring last year, what was he wide receiver four, wide receiver five, something like that. Well, reports came out today that Romo Dunze likely will be returning punts. So on top of what he can get out of that receiver room, he's also going to be getting some of the, some of the push from, 
from return yards. So that, in my mind, pushes his ADP up a little bit. Yeah, so I, I saw that to report today, it. and that was literally my first thought, too, was like, oh, snap, fishbowl. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, <huge. laughs> that's where our brains are at right now. <laughs> yeah, and anytime you hear a snip of uh, return yards like Greg Dorch, who is now getting some steam in the slot, uh, you know, he's probably going to get that starting role. And even if he doesn't return all the punts in the back, you know, getting that extra uh, yardage is just, you know, he, he returns 30 punts a year and can get that slot role. That's a very valuable position in the Scott Fishbowl to get. And you look at this. So we <clears throat> talk about tight end premium here. Alex waited till round eight and still walked out in the Joku. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised about that. I did a mock uh, last week, and I didn't take a tight end until like eleven or twelve because they every time I had one queued up, gone, gone, and I wasn't going to reach on one. So I'm happy with. I'm really thrilled with Njoku. He's kind of like the last guy I feel good about. I taught in the first like ten rounds or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took him in a dynasty startup actually as a guy that just kept sliding, and there was no everybody was reaching on tight end, and I was just like. I can't pay the price. I'm not going to move up yeah. to get him. And, and it's just a, the perfect kind of value. And and Ingram used to be in that kind of situation, but now people are steaming him up. He went in the sixth round in that dynasty startup, and he went in the third round in the fishbowl. I'm oh, sorry, the second round in the fishbowl here in our startup. So people are are, are really savvy now. It, it, it doesn't take long for people to really get on it. And uh, yeah, like uh, I really like that Njoku slide. And you know what? Maybe at this stage, uh, in a month from now, that won't be the case anymore. Uh, you know, Najoku could probably slide up a round or two just because of what we're talking about right now. So he's just one of these guys. You're a son of a bitch, Schultz. Because <laughs> he took uh, Zamir White. He took his yeah. guy. Yeah. We got a question in the chat. We got, do you think it's vital to get an elite tight end in Scott Fish this year? I'm going to say yes and no. Absolutely. Um, I think when you're looking at the top, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys. Um, yeah, huge advantage with the scoring. But if I don't get one of those top six, sevens, I'm cool like pulling what Alex did. Yeah, I, I agree. If you don't get one of the elite guys at the top and maybe value like a Njoku doesn't fall to where he did to me, I think you take your swing in like the double-digit rounds just see if you can find that next breakout guy, the next Laporta, the next Trey McBride. Because um, like in a tournament like this, you know, that if you hit on a guy... Well, this late, is a show that... That's going to be a huge difference maker. Sorry, go ahead. This is a show that that uh, <clears throat> stands the Andrew Cooper, friend of the show, um, uh, yin and yang tight end strategy, mm -hmm. and also the Rotoviz bully tight end. So, what you want to do is make sure you have an elite tight end in the top five, an another guy that can get up to a hundred targets, or sorry, ninety targets or ten touchdowns, um, and then by Rotoviz bully, you want three guys out of that top ten. And uh, so if you have to make it two guys that that possibly can get the 90 or 10 uh, to add to your elite guy, then go ahead and do that. But tight ends Absolutely. are premium for a reason. And uh, <clears throat> shout out to Bears fan 193 or whatever. <laughs> he says punt tight ends. <laughs> <laughs> that cracked me up. <clears throat> oh no all right let what's wrong what I happened love, Diggs? i do love some some fryer move this year too with what way high <laughs> absolutely i was <laughs> just about to damn it yeah well sucks for you right. huh i don't like this strategy anymore <laughs> strategy sucks well yeah you need to be getting, on that i'm gonna get my guys next time <laughs> well yeah you kind of need to like look like schultz i i don't think you're in bad shape now after the the your 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 two running back turn there i like where i like where you're where you're at there you know you got 
Zeus, you got Jonathan Brooks, both got some upside now. Uh, potential both starters there, and uh, yeah, that that could bolster your lineup when you look at what you got now at uh, at your core. Yeah, I think when you're gonna, if you're gonna punt a uh, running back, kind of like I did, if I'm gonna snag who's gonna be getting carries because that, I mean, what what is it a quarter quarter point per carry? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean that's gonna be a big back. difference. You could be looking at starting running backs, even if they stink, are gonna get you three, four, five points a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, All I mean right, think of it, think of it in terms of like what we what I've been hammering about Zamir White. If he has 20 carries in a game, that's immediately five points. Immediately. That's not with adding the yards, the first downs, like any of the catches he might make in those four targets, a touchdown or two, like that's immediately like his baseline is five points. Yeah, absolutely. I like his upside. I love, I love what's going on here. So what's, what's your strategy here, Alex, after seeing what your board looks like, uh, you know, there's, there's some ADP value here. Um, What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I feel like DeAndre Hopkins is a great value in the, what, end of the ninth round? Mm. I feel like he's still a target hog. I don't care that Calvin Ridley is there. He's still going to command targets. And if, if Will Levis hits, I mean, we could have another, you know, Top 15 season from DeAndre Hopkins, and I'm getting him as what my wide receiver five. Mm. I don't love any of the running backs here, so I just can't. I can't. I just can't do it. So, what's your outlook on uh, on Calvin Ridley there in that offense? Because both of them are kind of hitting that age cliff, and uh, we're looking at an offense that DeAndre Hopkins is obviously has that one year in familiarity, has that connection a little bit with Will Levis. And now they're bringing in Calvin Ridley, who, you know, is... Uh, you know, Trincy, uh, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> who cares about the Hawkinson snipe? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't going to come back to you, Biggs. It's okay. It's okay, man. It's okay. It's like so like about who I like or something. Ridley, Ridley and Hop. So you're obviously higher on, on Hopkinson, uh, on Hopkins, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I like Hopkins better. Um, I think he'll lead that team in targets. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out who to pick here. Yeah, uh, I'm never good on the clock. I always panic. All right, what are we? Tenth round. All right, yeah. I think it's time to take take a swing here. Trey Benson. Yeah, Trey that guy. Guys, I like that. Alex like is the OG Trey Benson guy. He right, has I've been, been Trey Benson RB one in this class for a long time. To Alex, if this was a normal twenty two rounder he would have been a, tar- a target of mine um, instead of Lad McConkie. Uh, I do love Lad McConkie, but, uh, but I think for the back half of the season, James Conner is old. Yeah. Trey Benson is going to arrive at some point and yeah. I'd like to, to bank on that happening this mm. year. Yeah. Trey Benson's going to start games for sure. Whether it's yeah. due to injury or he just outperforms James Conner. I mean, James Conner is what? 29. He, He's never played more. He's played more than 13 games in a season one time in his entire career. And I got uh, burned last year too. So I just, it's such a, it's going to be, that's going to be a great offense. And if Trey Benson has a stranglehold on top of that depth chart, at some point, second half of the year, he could be, you know, he could be that guy that you want in the fantasy playoffs. I could become that league winner. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got the athleticism. He's got the size. He's got, it's the whole package. <clears throat> Love there that sound. Is. Sound of champions. <laughs> oh, is it me? Is it me? All yeah. right. Um, let's hey, you're on the clock. Let's do it for the the content. Let's do it for the brand. Raylon Burks. <laughs> oh. He did not. <laughs> All right, tell us about your boy. We want to hear this. Let's talk. Take about the this. take the spotlight. Take it on. <laughs> right. We want to hear it. Uh, all right. So um, yesterday on Twitter, I posted a mystery player uh, who could possibly be a sleeper in the Scott Fishbowl. Um, 
and I did, and it was an outline of Traylon Burks. And the reason has nothing to do with target share in that offense or anything. It's that he has to play special teams this year. And I've watched him and his straight line speed, his ability to like miss, miss guys in open space. Um, when he was at Arkansas, he's going to be able to do it again on the NF at the NFL level. And he could be the sleeper kick returner this season. That's all I'm saying. That's a, it's a fair point, but for the lulls, like I'm going to just rag <laughs> on you for it. I can't no, quit trail on. <laughs> You're getting lit up in our, in our sleeper chat right now. Shia LaBeouf. He's just like, what? Burks? Blue pig suey forever. I cannot quit trail on. I can't do it. If he has one stand out there, it's me. It's going to be me. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, they're, we're going to see the kickoff be way more impactful, especially with the dual returners. And yeah, you're going to, this is going to be such a crazy year because there's going to be dudes that you're starting that like <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> I feel like yeah. it's because, because you're going to be a bi week hell, injury hell, yeah. and the likelihood of one of those dudes racking up seven, eight points on a couple of returns is probably better than you rolling out some wide receiver four on a team hoping he does something. I almost won a third, my 32, 32 team dynasty <laughs> league last season because I had Jamal Agnew. <laughs> right? Like <Yeah. clears throat> shit like that happens. So with my final pick, uh, it is between three guys. And again, it's for the content. It's because of the <laughs> kick return upside. Trey Tucker from Las Vegas, or four guys, Trey Tucker or Dylan Lobby from Las Vegas, Malachi Washington from Miami, or the guy that I'm going to take because I have to talk about him, so I'm going to get him, Xavier Gibson. We'll talk about him in a little bit. All right. Like it. Okay, I think the big question here is what the hell do we do with Taysom Hill? Draft him. All right. There you go. You, he said you heard it. it there from the man <laughs> himself. <laughs> He's an H-back, <clears throat> wildcat qu- quarterback, tight end. Uh, Juwan Johnson is hurt. Juwan Johnson is not reliable. They have Foster Moreau, who has brick hands. I seen it. Uh, they got Dallin Holker, who is one of the most unathletic uh, college tight end leaders in receptions and yards that we've ever seen. Uh, Taysom, Taysom is the dude. There's there's no uh, <clears throat> there's not really a whole lot of competition there, and and he can do everything. Do you think he gets some kick return run? No, no. Well, I, that's the thing. We don't know because the new <laughs> rules and everything. Maybe he's the ultimate kick returner in the NFL. I mean, he he could be. I mean, shit, they're ta- like with the dual returner. I mean, I watch a decent amount of XFL because I'm a DFS gen- degenerate. Um, sure. Dude, these the dudes are th- taking kickoffs regularly and they're returning them to midfield like often. Yeah, that's something I might want to do is go research some UFL games. Just to kind of see how it all works. Yeah, dude. Go grind some tape grind the UFL is what it's all about. The only problem is that we don't we don't know how the 53 men rosters are gonna work themselves out. And and I've brought up on the show before Rashid Shahid was like he's gonna have the biggest boost based on receive uh return points, but the re- kick return is usually reserved for a younger player who is working themselves into the offense or a much older player who that's all the value that they bring. So what is, is Rashid Shahid going to like be in on every play now and not returning kicks because they have somebody younger that they're going to put in there? I mean, you don't know. Hey, uh, uh, Gate, uh, Biggs, I got oh, a so question here from... You just in the chat. <laughs> Did I? Nice. <laughs> Uh, uh, we just got uh, a, a, a question from Gunner, uh, from from Gator, and he, he's asking me to ask you uh, when Scott. I added, can read, Mike. I was born a, in America. A, a, a Gunner point. Uh, 
<laughs> That's awesome. Shout How out you... Gator J for that one. That was a good <laughs> chuckle thing. That was awesome. All right, let's let's remove that board. Okay, thanks, Chelsea. That's awesome. Now let's get into our uh, guys in this draft that uh, didn't get drafted that you think might have a big impact what in this spot. Didn't get drafted. Sure. I thought we had to draft the, our spotlight. No, 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 no. Late round Man, guy was, who didn't get drafted in the mock. It was in the oh. um, so. Uh, well, it's no. to be fair, nobody was drafting Gibson anyways. Well, let's I talk. Uh, let's talk to our guest, our, our our guest of honor here, Alex. Who is a guy that we think are, or you think that our viewers should be having their eye on uh, in the later rounds of this fishbowl that uh, can be a late round steal uh, that could be actually a league winner. That's going to be, you know, maybe the the Puka Dakua, Kyron Williams type of guy that uh, you know next year people are going to be talking about lots. All right, my motto of twenty twenty four fantasy football. Is Kamani Vidal in every draft? Yep. Got to take mm-hmm. Kamani Vidal in every draft. You could ask. You could, you you could ask Schultz. I had him on the I had him on the 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 show sheet, but I erased him three times because I've talked about him so much. <laughs> we talked about just, him all yeah, the yeah, time. I, I'm just like I can't put him on here again because honestly, it's just going to be beating a drum down. But I love that call. Tell us why. Yeah. Yeah, when I first saw the show sheet, I saw him. I was like, damn, that's who I was going to pick. Mm-hmm. And then I went back to it, and I saw he was gone. I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I see, I see it. Good. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at the Chargers' backfield, it's what? Yeah, I know. Gus Edwards, who, yeah. I mean, come on. Come on. Gus Edwards. Gus, us. J.K. Dobbins, who's coming off, like, multiple serious leg injuries year over year over year. I mean, he's a good running back, but what what does he have left? And then Isaiah Spiller. I mean, come on. And... I mean, Vidal, I know he came from a small school, but he's a small, you know, small 5'8", but he's a big, big guy. He's 5'8", he's what, 215? That's a thick Yeah, boy. he's a thick guy. <laughs> yeah. um, so he's got the size to be a workhorse. Um, he's got athleticism. He doesn't go down easy. He just keeps his legs driving. Um, I like Schultz. A little bit like uh, <laughs> Blake Corum. I, I, think, I think Jim Harbaugh saw some Blake Corum and Kamani Vidal. Uh, discount Blake Corum. So I think he's going to have a heavy workload in that offense. Um, it might not be right away, but at some point, you know, six weeks into the season, he ends up taking over that backfield. And oh yeah, in the Scott Fish Bowl, you want these guys who are ascending, you know, week eight, week nine, week ten, um, as we're heading into the playoffs. And I think Kamani Vigdal could be that guy. And he was the sixth round pick, so there's also a chance he doesn't make the team. But I'm drafting him. See, I I disagree, oh, yeah. and the only point that I disagree on is how long it's going to take. I think he's going to like come out of the gate. He could be absolutely Gus, Gus Edwards, Gus Bus, love him. He he's done. J.K. Dobbins, two blasted Achilles. Isaiah Spiller yep. is not it. Kamani Vidal, he he's got the elusiveness. He's got the speed. He's got the thickness. Like the the dude is he's he's wowing them already. And I was, it's a it's a Greg Roman offense. Somebody made a comment about uh, one thing you can count on in a Greg Roman offense is they're going to have five running backs and cycle through them all. Um, not necessarily. Yeah, that's not when one guy is clearly the alpha, right. and that's going to be Vidal. One thing for sure is he is going to be like a preseason darling. He's going to can be one of these guys you want to play in like preseason DFS. Um, oh, for sure. Back. See, oh, I was drafting him. No one else to trot out there, right? I, I was drafting him ahead of guys like Marshawn Lloyd and, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, Jalen Wright in a lot of situations. Uh, you know, not always. There, there was a lot of, depending on where my roster was setting, but there, there was a lot of instances where I was actually picking him as my fifth running back off the board, and uh, and just because of that upside that could be within that Charger Harbaugh offense that you know. We saw what he did with Blake Corum. We've seen what he did in the past with the 49ers offense. They're very run centric, and we know that uh, he loves his running backs. And there could be a very good spot for both Gus Edwards and Kamani Vidal to be very successful uh, this year as well. So uh, don't discount either of those guys. Now, I'm going to get into Schultz now. Schultz, who is your guy that we should be talking about late round who's got a potential of, you know, stealing the draft for folks? Um, I'm going really 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 deep here into tyrone tracy um running back got drafted here out of purdue and 
Last year, he had 716 yards, eight touchdowns. Um, he had a pretty good season, but it, this is just a bad backfield, first of all. You're looking at Devin Singletary leading the way, who's yeah, – I've been a fan of him because he's one of those dudes who's just – he's just good. Like, he's not, he's not great at anything, but, like, he's just good. But – what's just good for this young team trying to trying to grow together um behind him what is it uh it, i don't even eric remember gray. Eric, gray. Eric, gray. Yeah. 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 eric gray they just um pulled over a dude from the ufl i mean the competition here is slim to none so you've got some opportunity for this guy to to take carries we talked about the carries um it's free points in the scoring so I love the the fact that you've got a guy this late with a chance to get some some meaningful carries, but the cherry on top is he's been taking kick returns, which is going to be a super common mm. thing, a common theme, sorry, with these deep dive players. For me, is going to be taking shots at dude who, dudes who are going to, you know, maybe do some returning and two have a shot at playing time. If you can fit both of those. I will draft your ass so fast late in this Scott Fish roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your ass oh, won't even know what happened. No, absolutely <laughs> not. All right, Biggs, tell us what you got, buddy. All, All right, right so man. I'm going to call an audible. Omaha! Omaha! I'm calling an audible, and I'm not going to go with Xavier Gibson because I drafted him, and the 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 prompt was guys that weren't <laughs> taken. Um even though I wouldn't have t- taken them that early. Uh, so I'm going to go through the list. I'm going to read down the list, the player list of the guys that uh, I would like to draft from now until round 22. Curtis Samuel. Um, this is kind of like a, a graduation ceremony. Curtis Samuel. Oh, wait, no, sorry. It starts with Javante Williams, Russell so Wilson. You have to wait to clap until you're totally done. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Javante Williams, Russell, Russell Wilson, Daniel Jones, Brian Robinson. Come, come get up here. You got Blake Corum. Come get your th- Curtis Samuel. It, there, we tied him in a ba, ribbon for you. Ba, 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 <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, Condre Miller. <laughs> uh, oh, Ben Sonat. It just keep, it, like it, it won't stop. Um, Rico Dowdle. Yeah, I don't know why he's not reading in alphabetical order either. Okay, we, we practice that way. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, keep keep going. Um, uh, dang it, Kamani Vidal, Marvin Mims, Roshan Johnson, Wandale Robinson. That was a, a nice little bunch there. Sam Darnold, um, Sam Howell. Audric Estime, Braylon Allen, Greg Dortch, Dylan La, Dil, Dylan La, Bobby, uh, D, Dylan Lobby. I'm not quite sure how to say this. Dylan Lobby, Trey Lobby? Tucker. One of those two guys. I mean, we're talking, we're taking shot. Oh, ooh, ooh. Um, Justin Tucker, Evan McPherson, Bre- uh, <laughs> uh, Young Way Koo, Jake Elliott. Beautiful. Yeah. Trey mm-hmm. Lance. Shakespeare couldn't have not even done that better. Dicker the kicker. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. That's awesome. And I'm All not right. going to say Van Jefferson. Is he here? Yeah. Not. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> he spared us that one at least. <laughs> <laughs> That's a so I don't want to go down again. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to talk about a guy that I think is going to come out and he's going to come out flying. He's, he's going to, he's poised to probably be in a committee with, Ezekiel Elliott, but I'm talking about Rico Dowdle, and he's shown promising metrics that suggest he could outperform his expectations. In 2023, he was 16th among 53 qualifying running backs in yards after contact per attempt and had 23rd lower stuff rate. So he's got the ability to break tackles and avoid negative plays. He's got a really good 
you know, size. So I'm thinking he's going to be able to, what are you laughing at? You laughing at me? <laughs> no, I'm laughing, I'm laughing at Gator. Arkansas Tech, baby. Division two. Yeah. <laughs> Arkansas State. I um, love it. I love it. So well, let's get back to Rico Dowdle. And I just think he's going to, you know, have a chance to emerge. He's going to have a bigger workload than he did last year. I think, I think Elliot is going to dominate the goal line work initially, but I think Dowdle has a solid chance to earn more touches, especially uh, if Elliot's effectiveness declines because of his age. Considering Tony Pollard's success after leaving Dallas, I think that uh, Dowdle shares similarity, uh, has good profiling opportunity, and uh, I think he's just going to thrive in that offense. He's got an opportunity to, to get into some share there and uh, and thrive. So if he can outperform uh, Zeke, he has an opportunity of becoming the you know really big in that offense. I think you're just kissing Matt Kelly's ass. I I do too. It's great. I do too. <laughs> hey, at least he's going in it, man. Yeah. He, I think he's going to get more touches than Trey Lon Burks at minimum. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Gator, you are on fire. We, we got to get Gator on this show the next time. So, Gator, uh, you're invited onto our next Fishbowl mock draft as a guest because uh, I think you'll be a hoot. So, if you're willing to come on, uh, you know, uh, hit us up on uh, on our DMs. I know Biggs uh, and you get along really well. So, let's let's get you on the show if you if you're willing. Yeah, uh, hit my DM on Sleeper or at Big Bone at FFB on Twitter, and uh, and let's get you on the show, Gator. Yeah, man, Alex. It's been an awesome time having you on our show. We thank you for like a full hour of your time. We really appreciate it. You know, midweek, I'm sure you got a lot on the plate, but it's always important to have you on. And, uh, you know, uh, you've given Schultz a really good opportunity and you got him on the on, on the platform here. And uh, we really appreciate you finding him because uh, he found us. And he's become a really integral part of our unit here. And uh, you, you, you spotted the talent. And uh, we appreciate that. So why don't you tell our viewers about yourself again, where to find all your stuff. And uh, we appreciate having you on, man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Um, and Schultz, I mean, he's great. Um, <laughs> sure. great, to see, great to see what he's uh, he's accomplishing right now. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you can find... Find me on Twitter, A underscore Johnson FF. Everything we're doing at yardsforfantasy.com. Subscribe to the Yards for Fantasy YouTube channel. Find, yes. find the podcast feed as well. And yeah, appreciate you guys awesome. having me on. And re real quickly, I want to say, Gator, if you want to come on the show, you have to have a beard and glasses. Um, the hat is optional. <laughs> we love uh, it. Or uh, a <laughs> Lee Corso Gator head. <laughs> oh, yes, that yeah. would be acceptable too. Yeah. Hey, Biggs. Why don't Not you do so what fast, you do, my friend? <laughs> Why don't you do what you do best, my buddy? Drink beer and sign <laughs> us off. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you guys for watching the show. Like and subscribe. We'll be coming back at least once a week with live streaming Scott Fishbowl 14 mock drafts. And in fact, there is something in the works to have a battle of the sexes mock draft with Wendy early in the program. So look for that. We Be love late. you guys. Uh, like subscribe, hit the bell, follow us on Twitter at we bone at FFB at FF connect 99 at shoe one C S C H U one T Z Y. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and we'll see you next week. We hope you win. Hope you win everybody. Hope you win.